To ensure that you're going to get optimum productivity out of your grass, you need to start at the beginning and look at your soil. Different soil types can require very different management. It's important to have soil structure correct. The chemical analysis is one side of the story, but we need to know that our soil structure is correct in, in the terms that it's not compacted. If we have compacted soils, then we don't have access to nutrients. When you dig a plug of soil, you need to consider a few points. Firstly, you need to consider roots, at what stage you can find the roots, and the roots in this case are down well below six, seven inches. It's also important then to look what worm activity we have in the, in the plug of soil. And in a plug of soil of this size, we'd be looking for about 10 worms. It's important to look at the color. The color of the soil is essential. If we have dark, smelly type soils, then we have a sign of compaction. If we have brown colorings across the soil, orangey brown, like rust, then that is showing water being held through parts of the season, another sign of compaction. The most critical part is where are the cracks in our soil. If we have cracks running downwards, that's a good sign. If we have cracks running across, then that can be a bad sign. If cracks run across, that will be a compaction point. Water cannot drain through and neither can nutrients reach the roots. One of the problems associated with horizontal cracking and poor drainage is surface capping. The problem is more often associated with arable cropping. However, rainfall on fine, naturally unstable soils can lead to slaking of the surface into an impenetrable cap of up to 5 mm in thickness. This can restrict seedling emergence and prevent oxygen uptake by the roots. Digging a soil pit is the best way of identifying soil structure problems such as grey or black zones associated with severe compaction. Machinery and traffic on the land can cause deeper compaction between 10 and 15 centimetres. These layers can smell foul and can severely restrict rooting so need to be cultivated out. There are various machines on the market that will help to improve compaction problems, from subsoilers to machines that work further up the soil profile. The key element is to ensure that water is able to drain through the soil profile and not run off, taking nutrients and soil with it. Once the structure of the soil is established, then the pH needs to be right. Acidity in the soil reduces bacterial and earthworm activity, as well as nutrient uptake. It's always been important to test soils, but increasingly so now with the price of fertilisers they are. We need to improve efficiencies. 75% is far better than 50% return for, the, for a very expensive product. So we only know what we need if we test our soils. Once the structure of the soil is established, then the pH needs to be right. Acidity in the soil reduces bacterial and earthworm activity, as well as nutrient uptake. How much lime to apply depends on soil type and liming material. Remedying pH can take months. Very acidic soil may not be corrected in one season. And remember that too much lime can lock up minerals. pH is the most essential part of anything that you'll do on your farm. Without adequate pHs, then we won't grow quality grass. It's important to say though that uh, pHs have to be between pH 6 and 6.5. Above or below can cause us problems. To take a soil, soil analysis, we need to take a representative sample from, from the grazing area of the soil in the top three inches. And in order to see what our pH is, we can use a soil indicator. So we use the soil and pour a little bit of the indicator onto the soil. And this should give us a coloration as to the pH of the soil. And it starts green and it starts to change to various colors. And on this occasion, it starts to redden. And we use this card and we decide at what point we think the pH of this soil is. This, this card is, is within 0.5 of each pH, so we have 5.5 to 6, and on this occasion we think it's somewhere between 5.5 and 6. Trace elements are obviously a huge problem to, to many farmers. In order to get to maximise uh, the trace elements available in the soils, pH is critical.
Traditionally we've been able to test pH with soil indicators, with all sorts of little uh, testing kits, but by today I would personally would advise that farmers send soils away for analysis because accuracy is essential. Sulphur is essential for the uptake of nitrogen. Traditionally we hadn't had anything to worry about because we had enough deposition from the rainfall. Due to uh, industry emissions being cleaned up, our deposition of, of sulphur dioxide is falling away and we're finding huge sulphur deficiencies. In order to get maxim maximising return from nitrogen, then we certainly need to make sure there's enough sulphur available to the grass. Getting the soil nutrient status right is crucial if grassland is going to be productive. A soil test can uncover problems with trace element lockup and can be a cost effective way of spotting problems. It's also good practice to soil sample every three to five years, although if you're in an agri-environment scheme it's well worth checking the frequency. Remember not to sample within six months of lime or fertiliser applications. It's increasingly important to have a real grip on grass and management because it's the cheapest feed that we can have on our farms. The price of purchasing feeds the importance of controlling input costs and, and having secu food security, we need to produce our own feed and that's from grass. Fertiliser is one of the most expensive inputs to grassland and as its price goes up, ensuring that it's used to optimum effect becomes ever more important. To ensure you're getting the best you can from it, it's really important to know what your field needs to achieve the correct nutrient status. To do this, we start with pH. It's also important to check the trace elements that may cause problems with nitrogen lockup, such as molybdenum and sulphur. The use of manures can have a large impact on how much nitrogen to apply, as can clover. Soil samples can give you the information you require to use the minimum amount of artificial fertilizer. Phosphate and potash, that's P and K, are essential for grass and clover growth. Phosphate is important for root development within plants, while potash has a key role in water regulation and nitrogen efficiency. Monitoring P and K levels by soil sampling allows targeted, cost-effective nutrient management. P and K should be supplied by reserves in the soil, which are maintained by bagged fertilisers and livestock manures. It's important to aim for a soil index of two. Fertiliser and all manure should be applied to match offtakes to maintain the soil index at 2. Swords cut for silage take away more nutrients from the soil. When reseeding, consider applying P and K fertiliser when indices are 3 or below for P and 2 or below for K, but deduct this from the annual requirement. A single P application is generally preferred, but targeted, frequent applications matching crop offtake are better at low P indices. High K indices, that's above 3, can lead to luxury uptake and mineral lockups, leading to staggers in cattle and sheep. On grazing land, K is best applied later in the season or as small, frequent applications. Our personal opinion is, is that put, you put a nitrogen on, you're getting your, the fix of grass at the time of year where the grass is going to grow anyway. Um, and so we basically uh, we've put in crops. So when the grass growth grows slows down, we've got crops such as red clover and, and the, the chicory, pure chicory stands, which the lambs will go on to keep growing. So it's the time of year where the, the ewes need to dry up anyway. So we don't want them on 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 lush green grass. So we basically use in the, the, the we're lambing at the time of year where the grass is growing at its best. So. Uh, we wean at the time of year where the grass is slowed down and they'll go on to crops that, that can tolerate the dry and then the grasses aren't as, as um, lush green for, for the ewes when you want them to be dried off anyway. Uh, and basically we're looking at with the PK and, and lime being right, um, we're looking at probably getting the same amount of growth of grass 12 months of the year as we would have if we just put nitrogen on and had that growth at the time of year where the grass grows well it's anyway. So. No, we, we, we believe that we've expanded our youth lock and, and just by altering the PK and lime that we've got more grass now than we had before. Um, years down the track, maybe you could say, well, if you've got everything else right and you wanted to stock a bit heavier or something, then there's, you could say there's an op option for, for nitrogen. But um, with the talk of uh, nit nitrate vulnerable zones and all coming in, we want to try and make the farm 
be able to run for us without the nitrogen. Uh, our stocking rates uh, uh, at the moment are about seven ewes the acre, and uh, we've done that without nitrogen. So really, why do we need? You know, we don't, wouldn't if we any more than that. We're going to run out of space at lambing time for outdoor lambing and stuff anyway. So we haven't got the land at the certain times of year where nitrogen wouldn't make a difference. So. So we're basically stocking the farm to what it'll carry and, and doing it without nitrogen, basically. Utilising farmyard manures efficiently has become increasingly important as the price of bag fertiliser rises. It is vital that the nutrient status of this resource is analysed to comply with the guidelines set out in RB209. Several tools are available to help you calculate the correct application rates of farmyard manures. These include software such as Manor and Planet from ADAS.